thanks for coming to Node School, a chapter in the making. I know it's a uh, the last talk after a long day, so I really appreciate you coming to hear about Node School. Um, I think that I always come up with a better talk title uh, way after I submit my abstract. So the alternate title for this talk is Node's Cool at Node School. So there that is. Uh, my name's Lydia. I'm LL Cats everywhere on the internet. Um, you see that, that cat face? Uh, that's me. Uh, I also have stickers and magnets if you want one, so come find me, because that's cool. I'm a front-end developer at Craigslist, a classified ad site in the US. So what is a front-end dev doing at a largely enterprise-focused no con node conference? Um, the answer is that in my spare time, I am a co-organizer at the San Francisco chapter of Node School, and today I want to give you some background on Node School's origins, what it was like to start our local chapter, and some challenges we've come across in the almost two years of running our meetup, and some potential ways forward for the organization as a whole. Node School is a decentralized open source community. Its mission uh, from the website has two goals to create high quality programming curricula and to host community learning events. For some history, I was listening to the Node Up podcast episode number 55, where Michael Rogers, Max Ogden, Jessica Lord, and Rod Vag all talked Node School for the entire episode. Node School started off as a series of Node modules that people wrote in order to facilitate code workshops at events in uh, 2013. James Halliday, who you might know better as Substack, made the first workshopper called Stream Adventure to teach people about streams for NodeConf 2013. Rod Vag liked that it was interactive and hands-on, and he made uh, the Learn You Node module for CampJS, a JavaScript conference in Australia. And the idea caught on, and Level Me Up was soon created as a way to teach LevelDB. The Node, the Node School modules were created to be taught at specific events or meetups, but it was immediately apparent that uh, they could be reused again and again. So, uh, or even uh, someone could follow or download them by themselves and work on them on their own. So after they had a few of these modules, Max Ogden was talking to another developer, Brian Brennan, at NodeConf EU that year about how to take the concept even further. Max came up with the name Node School, and Brian bought the domain name right away that night, which wasn't, wasn't quite, quite right at the beginning. Uh, he woke up the next day, the, the dangers of partying a little too hard, realized he hadn't quite gotten it right, and tried again, registering the nodeschool.io uh, URL, which is the central hub and home base for Node School Online. Substack and Max did the initial front end on the first Node School I.O. homepage, and Max said I should show a screenshot. So here it is, in glorious Internet Archive Wayback Machine Vision, the old Node School homepage. Max told me that in the early days of the site, uh, before they had chapters, it was mostly workshop authors adding their workshops to the website and people adding their Node School events to the Google spreadsheet that rendered the map on the site. And then a little while later, Jessica Lord helped Max redesign the current homepage, which is what you'll see today. As the organization grew, Max came up with the idea for chapters as location-specific recurring meetups, and he launched the chapters feature on the website. With growth came complexity, and Matthias Boos, uh, Mafintosh on GitHub, wrote a bot to automate tasks in the repo. Along the way, lots of other people helped out Rod and Substack with workshopper modules themselves, and still many others helped with the main Node School website. It was truly a group effort, uh, and they helped create about 100 new chapters uh, in that first year alone. Max told me that they designed the repo so that each chapter is in control of its own GitHub team and its own GitHub pages site underneath the nodeschool.io uh, domain, so that there's little or no bottlenecks or maintenance really needed by the people who work on the core domain itself. He said that giving each chapter control of their own website and presence under the Node School um, organization was the key thing that he thought made it work as a decentralized group that could grow quickly. One of the challenges they faced uh, initially was uh, their work on internationalization in both the web website and the workshoppers. 
Martin Heidegger really led the charge there working with Node School Osaka. And you can see the variety of languages uh, across the top there uh, that anyone can choose from. So it was truly glo global in its focus from the very beginning. Jessica also made the hexagon logo and made a template so that people could add their own location abbreviation to it and make stickers really easily and have swag for their attendees. Um, it's kind of important to have an identity and I think that the logo really helped with that and stickers are basically a requirement for meetups these days anyhow. So it was another way to help organizers get their events all official and stuff like that. Um, and you can see that people have taken it even further and made really creative designs uh, so I think that kind of showcases the creativity in our community. Node School San Francisco started in the same way that all chapters start nowadays, and all it took was an issue on GitHub. In December 2014, Andrew Duque, who was working for NerdWallet at the time, created the issue in the Node School organizer's repo. He actually had very little Node experience at the time, which I think is really cool that he felt empowered to just start something up. Max Ogden pinged some of the people he knew in the area to help, and I was one of them, and I was just all too happy to jump on board. My now co-organizer, Reza Akhavan, was also participating in that discussion. <clears throat> As we got started, the documentation in the repo and the wiki were really helpful, and a bunch of people chimed in to give advice. Uh, to get a, a website up and running really quickly, I forked the Node School Campinas site at the suggestion of Philippe Oliveira and made a few tweaks and went live. Reza made the Twitter account and we created the initial logo from the logo builder online and we finally had our first event on February 7th at New Relic in San Francisco. Uh, so there's the proof. That is from our very first event. Um, and since then, almost every picture of an active event just kind of looks like that. It's a bunch of people in a room working on their computers and getting help from other people. It's a casual gathering where people work at their own pace on the Node School materials. If someone gets stuck or if they have more questions or just want to talk about Node stuff, they just raise a hand and a mentor comes by to offer assistance. It's self-paced, no pressure, social learning. <coughs> Pardon me. So our chapter is sustained um, with a variety of different things, I think. Uh, we've been holding Node School SF for uh, almost every month for almost two years now. And that sort of regularity comes with a lot of effort. First, having Mozilla as our monthly sponsor means that the logistical overhead of finding a, a, an event space um, sorting out how to get there, informing our attendees, uh, it solved a lot of that logistical overhead for us as organizers. And it also provides a consistent home base for our attendees. Reza also redesigned our homepage and our stickers. We thought about the identity we wanted for the chapter and eventually settled on the rainbow as an identifying color scheme, since San Francisco uh, has a history of supporting and accepting LGBTQ and all sorts of folks. And that sort of sense of welcoming acceptance is a core part of the chapter's identity. We want everyone to come and feel welcome at our events. To that end, we reiterate, we reiterate information about our code of conduct policy at the beginning of each event to underscore and inform our attendees that harassing or offensive behavior will not be tolerated in order to foster a safe and comfortable learning environment for everyone. We also have a community of mentors, uh, this steady pool of people in the area who donate their time and, and energy. Uh, we have lots of repeat mentors, and I especially have to call out Rich Trot, the guy all the way on the left there. He's a Node Core contributor, and he's also mentored with us every single event. I can't even say I've been at every single event since uh, February 2015, because he's really awesome. Um, experienced Node developers in the Bay offer the time they have to spare, whether it's for one event or for several, and that sort of dependable community has been awesome to tap into. We've also experimented with our format, like offering other lessons uh, while the main event is happening, focus sessions where attendees are more for formally guided by a leader. Um, and we've also teamed up with NodeBots uh, to have them come in and lead a focus session on hardware every other month. So that's a really cool partnership. Can you hear me? All right. That is a cool partnership is what I said. And of course, I couldn't do any of this without my amazing co-organizer, hey. 
Uh, my computer's being a little pokey. My amazing co-organizer, Reza, whose energy and ideas and steady work makes all of this possible. And I know that he leans on me for the same. Spreading out the work of logistics and organization with a team you can depend upon is crucial for the success of a Node School chapter. And it also helps if you get a cake that's decorated the same as your sticker logo too. That, was, that cake was really amazing. I'm just never gonna forget that cake. Come on. And Jane is making a cameo. Um, the in-person events are really important, I think, because it's as much of a space to network and build relationships as it is a place to learn how to code, to meet other people at your level or learn how to help other people and become a mentor. Uh, like students learn how to teach and then they become mentors in turn. Uh, or they can learn how to public speak and lead sessions. Attendees at Node School SF have met people through whom they got jobs, not by being recruited, but by expanding their network. These face-to-face -face, uh, interactions present people with opportunities that they just can't have any other way. <clears throat> there are some growing pains that, uh, that we've encountered, although Node School has grown actually really well for three years now, so instead I've been thinking of these challenges more as maintenance pains. Now that we've, we're comfortable running our meetup, it's a little easier for us at Node School San Francisco to look beyond our chapter and appraise the current landscape of Node School as an organization. <coughs> Martin, recent, Martin uh, who I mentioned before did the translation work, recently wrote a Medium post about ways Node School can improve, including thoughts about translation and overall organizational structure. I have a little overlap in this next session, but I also encourage you to read his post about ways to pitch in with Node School. The three main challenges I wanna highlight in running a Node School meetup are that workshopper quality has degraded over time. Our uh, learning materials have a high barrier to entry for true novices, and we have an overall lack of organizational level direction. Uh, but before I jump into outlining the challenges with workshoppers, I better back up and explain what workshoppers even are in a little more detail. This is the core learning material for Node School, command line modules that contain related lessons. This is a screenshot, a screenshot from Learn New Node, which teaches fundamental Node concepts. Kind of has an old timey CRT monitor DOS feel to it. The lessons range from IO and async concepts to writing simple HTTP servers. To complete a lesson, a student has to write code and then run it against the workshopper's tests. If you don't pass, you get an error message and output to look at and compare against uh, the expected output. A lot of workshopper tests match on randomly generated strings to make sure that the transformation logic is correct. <coughs> And when you do pass, you get a nice screen pass message and some workshoppers like Learn You Know to official the, or offer the official output so that you can compare how you implemented your solution. If you remember the screenshot of the very first Node School website, there were all of three workshoppers to choose from. Uh, but now there's a few more than that. So many that eight are labeled as core curriculum and the rest are electives on special topics like React, functional programming, promises, and WebGL. And with so many workshoppers has come a certain amount of quality degra degradation over time. Maintainers get busy or they move on to new projects. They may not have the time or capacity to triage issues or accept pull requests. Uh, some workshoppers, even core curriculum ones, have dozens of open PRs and issues. We even had tried having a couple mentor hack nights in SF, but the, the problems with that approach were that it was difficult to know where the group should even get started and that they felt like even if they did create some pull requests, there wasn't any faith that they would actually get merged. So what's the point if you're gonna do work that doesn't actually land in the, in the project itself? Another challenge that we face is that it can be fairly difficult to get going even with, uh, it can, even if you have mentor support, the, the learning materials can be really difficult to uh, approach, especially as a very fresh beginner. You need to have an IDE or a text editor set up. You need to figure out how to execute, or you need to know what the terminal is and how to ex execute commands on it. If you've no newly installed Node, you might get that E access error when you try to install a workshop or module globally. These are difficulties that mentors are great at assisting with, like I mentioned, but it, it remains a point of friction for beginning programmers. 
And finally, there just doesn't feel like there's an overarching goal or direction for the event or the organization. Though we're a global organization, chapters still feel fairly siloed from each other. On the one hand, this lets people mold the event into what fits the needs of their community, but on the other, it can feel kind of amorphous for new chapters to start or continue. There's a lack of direction for improvement. It's difficult to understand the needs of not only attendees, but also of organizers and mentors, the people who run Node School. So with all that said about some of the maintenance pains that we face, how do we try to fix some of these challenges? I think that some of the answers lie in giving more power and merge permissions to Node School contributors, in providing alternate methods to access the learning materials, and picking a few organizational goals for people to work towards. First, I think that we should be moving the workshoppers, uh, at least the ones especially in the core curriculum, to an organization where Node School members have permission to merge pull requests. Once people are confident that their, that their pearl requests were, will get merged, uh, I think we'll have a lot more volunteers updating content. We can also then define overarching standards like consistent code style for every workshopper so there's not that inconsistency from lesson to lesson. There are also tools out there to potentially make workshoppers more accessible. Jessica Lord's first version of the Git It workshopper, which teaches how to use Git and GitHub, was a module in the terminal like all the other workshoppers. But she recently revamped it as an Electron application, where the guide and exercises are all self-contained. The only other thing you need is a text editor, and this interface can be a little more approachable for some people. Another idea that I had was um, Continuing to maintain the command line modules for people who are comfortable with the terminal and uh, text editor already. But for people who are not as familiar, an environment like the Cloud9 browser could be an all-in-one solution uh, that avoids having to make students download modules, configure file permissions, or worry about where they're saving files. It's definitely not the same as having a whole environment set up or learning about that entire workflow holistically. But if a student's goal is to learn some programming skills that day, it could ease the overhead of setup for the event. And additionally, if we wanted to support people who couldn't afford to bring their own laptop and had to borrow one instead, uh, it could ease the difficulty of having to borrow that computer. It's not a panacea, but it could be a useful tool in certain cases. And then there's a whole lot more uh, suggestions that I had, but I don't really have time to go into them. Um, but just understanding the, the needs and wants of attendees and mentors and organizers. Um, organizing and prioritizing tasks so that people, um, you know, we're all busy people with lives. If, if tasks are more approachable uh, to take on feasibly in an evening or in a weekend, uh, we might have more contributors. Uh, and then also explore how other groups are teaching programming, their methods and motives, and see what we can learn from them. Node Together and RailsBridge are two groups that spring to mind. I know that there are a lot of really smart people thinking about all this stuff too. I, I just feel like we need to bring them all together somehow and, and start working. In all, I've come to realize that the effort you need to start something is really different than the effort that you need to maintain it. Once you have the content and the organization together, what's next? I think that's the question we're asking ourselves as we continue working with Node School events. In closing, you might know the saying, give someone a fish and you feed them for a day, teach someone to fish and you feed them for a lifetime. What I've learned about Node School is that if you give a community a framework for education, they'll go out and teach the world. And I think that's a remarkable fact about the JavaScript community. We will continue to think of ways to maintain and grow the utility of Node School, which is already off to such a great start, and I feel really lucky to be part of it. I have a few closing shout outs to people who contributed to this talk with content, information, advice, uh, and people who have made Node School and Node School San Francisco what it is today. Uh, and to all of you for listening, I hope you take a look at what we're doing over at Node School and help us grow the Node community by teaching the world. Thanks. <laughs>